I'm just going to say a few words of welcome. I'm Butch Van, Chair of the Music Department. And we're really, really pleased to have the opportunity to collaborate with Middle East Studies uh, this semester and the fall semester. Bashar Damani has uh, been fantastic in organizing this residency at Mosa Namju, and it's been just a fantastic experience already, even starting last December with the concert in, in Martino's Auditorium, which was amazing. And so I'm going to turn it over to Bashar to actually introduce Mosin. But thanks so much for organizing this. Uh, thank you, Butch. And thank you very much to the music department. I actually, I'm not going to introduce Mosin because he's too well known for all of you here. But for our audience watching on uh, uh, this live, streaming through the website of the University of Brown University, uh, I'll only say that. Uh, I, I can't believe that I'm standing here introducing a person I've been a fan of for many, many years before I met him in person in San Francisco at a concert. Mohsen uh, Namju's uh, residency at Brown University this semester, next semester, is a dream come true for, for us. Uh, it shows uh, the importance and the uh, vibrancy of Iranian culture within and outside of Iran. And today, uh, he will be talking about uh, Shahram Shafareh, who I cannot also believe is actually with us here today. He came all the way from Los Angeles. Sharam <laughs> uh, is a legend in the world of Iranian pop music. And since his early days in the 60s as a drummer with the Iranian band, The Rebels, and you don't look like you were a drummer in the 60s. You look much younger than that. Has become one of the most recognized figures in modern Iranian music. He came to the United States after uh, the revolution of 1979. And during his prolific career, he's released over 20 albums and actually uh, performed in several films as well. Uh, this will be one of several talks that Mokhsa Namju uh, will be giving at Brown this semester and next semester. Uh, we will have another one on April 9th on East and West. And there'll be a, a performance on May 10th, Saturday, 15 song set, which I'm sure you don't want to miss. Also, all held here at the Grant. Uh, thanks so much to the music department for working with us on this issue, for allowing us to use the space and for participating in his residency here. Um, I would like to point out a uh, undergraduate Brown student, Siavash Nadri, who will be uh, joining Moksin uh, Namishu, and I hope as well. Uh, Shahram for a discussion uh, right after the talk for about 15 minutes. He'll be doing the translations. Thank you very much and please help me welcome Marcia Nemesh. Three months ago, for me, it was like absolutely a dream to just having uh, Mr. Sharab Shafre here with us today. Uh, but uh, the last moment, he kindly just uh, made it and uh, joined us for uh, this event. Uh, you have to be sure if we just uh, had announced for the Iranian audience, uh, we, we have to uh, book uh, another venue for here because a lot, lot of people uh, they know him, a lot of Iranian people, and uh, uh, but uh, we we didn't announce to the Iranian audience. Just just we uh, let all uh, uh, academician and uh, American friends here, and uh, that's why we have like very private event and with the. Uh, mm, uh, uh, like having live live studio performing and uh, talking and about the, everyone right now is uh, with the, our dear friends are helping us here uh, is uh, this event is uh, streaming live on the internet and uh, everyone is uh, is seeing us. Uh, so. To start, uh, I asked uh, my dear friend Siavash 
to, to help me about the translation to the having or talk today. Do it. Mr. Chapare just asked me uh, after my talk, he just asked me to uh, ask you to just guess how old is he? And uh, because when I was in childhood, I was a big, big fan of his music and everyone in Iran was a big fan. Is is no exaggeration on this. And uh, because uh, I can, uh, I just gathered you here to talk about this, that he is the, really is the icon of happiness for the Iranian pop culture. مخاطبه کسایی که تو این جلسه هستن در واقع دو دسته این بحث به دردشون نخواهد خورد. So of the audience that we have here tonight, uh, there are two groups that are not going to uh, be benefiting so much from this talk. یه دسته اونایی هستند که عاشقان و فن‌های شهرام شپره هستند. Uh, one of the first group is the people who really love and follow Shahram. اونا نیازی به دونستن مطلب توری ندارن برای که لذت میبرن از موسیقی آقای شپره. For uh, enjoying Shahram's music they don't need any sort of theoretical understanding of his work. دسته دوم روشنفکران نسل من هستن که در واقع جاجمنت دارن راجع به موسیقی پاپ. Uh, the second group is uh, the intellectuals of his generation who are extremely judgmental towards uh, this type of music. So I start um, with myself and, and I'm trying to get to uh, why I started thinking about this project in the first place. Uh, فکر کردن راجع به مفهوم کارنوال و شادمانی جمعی بود که ما تو فرهنگ ایرانی خیلی نداریم. Uh, the first was uh, thinking about carnivals and, uh, and uh, general and public anniversaries that we don't have really in the Persian culture. ما خیلی از ایونت های پابلیک اون برای مراسم عزاداری هست ولی برای شادمانی مثل اروپایی ها و آمریکایی ها توی خیابون نمی uh, We have a lot of uh, public events for uh, sorrowful, uh, sorrowful cases, but we don't have anything for, uh, for being cheerful, like you have that in Europe and the US. راجب این بخش در آخر صحبتم توضیح خواهم داد. I will talk about this further in the end of my talk. ولی ماجرای اصلی یه ماجرای شخصی بود. اونمی که وقتی من 25 سالم بود در یک پارتی با موسیقی شهرام شپره گریه کردم. Uh, when I was 20, 25, yeah. When I was 25, uh, in, in some instance I cried with uh, uh, while listening to Shahram's music at a party. توی توی پارتی که همه داشتن با موزیک شهرام می‌رقصیدن. In a party where actually everyone was dancing and enjoying Shahram's music. و این سال برای من پیش اومد که این غم از کجا میاد. And it was a question in my mind where this sorrow is coming from. برای کسایی که اینجا موزیک میدونن اینو میدونن که ما بر اساس تقسیم بندی دو تا گام ماجور و مینور اساسا قطعات قمالود دنیای موزیک مربوط به گام مینورن so for those of you who know about music here uh, if you divide uh, music into major and minor scale major scale is for happiness and minor is for uh, sorrow یعنی وقتی که شما به باخ یا به ویوالدی فکر میکنید میتونید حد بزنید که بیشتر کاراش در مینور ساخته شده When you think about Bach or Vivaldi you can think you can guess already that uh, most of the works are in uh, minor ولی اگه به به موزارت برای مثال مثال فکر کنید کاراش اکثرا در ماجوره But thinking about Mozart you would guess that his most of his works are in major scale از حدود 80 سال پیش تا الان در ایران اکثر موسیقی های غمگین سنتی یا پاپ به یک شکلی به گام مینور ارتباط دارن. Uh, ever since 80 years ago in Iran most of the uh, sorrowful music in Iran is one way or another related to uh, the minor scale. 
میگه ریتم غم یک مفهوم خیلی عمیقه میتونه یک ریتم شاد شما رو غمگین کنه sorrow is a very deep concept it can a very cheerful music can actually make you unhappy and sad یه و به خاطر اینکه غم اگر در ساعت 9 یه شبی میاد ریشش ممکنه در یک ساعت قبلش یا یک روز قبلش باشه When uh, sorrow comes to you at 9 at 9 p.m., yeah, the, the, the root of it can be in an hour ago or, or way back. Or four months ago. Or a year ago. Or it could be a historical sorrow that uh, you've been trying to get over for 30 or 40 years. It, uh, sorrow comes and doesn't ask for permission. ولی غم سه تا کاتالیزور داره. But uh, sorrow has three main catalysts. یکیش کلامه. One is words. یکیش لحن غمگین خواننده است. One is the way that uh, a singer utters the, 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 the song. و دیگریش گام که میتونه بیشتر گام مینور باشه. And the other one is the scale which is mostly the minor scale. جالب بدونید که جنتلمنی که اینجا نشسته همه این ستا ویژگی رو داره ولی آیکون هپینسه برای فرهنگ ایران. And uh, Shahram here has all these three catalysts of sorrow and yet he is the icon of happiness and cheerfulness in Iran. اجازه دارید راجع به مسئله گام مینور یک توضیح بدم. So let me give some explanations about the minor scale. مینوری که می‌شنویم در واقع اگر از نوت سی شروع بکنیم درجه دومش میشه دی سو استارتینگ فرام دو فرام سی یو هاف دی سیکند دی نیکست دیگری از دی درجه بعدیش میشه ای فلات ون یو هاف ای فلات بعدش اف بعدش جی بعدش ای فلات بعدش دی و دوباره سی این 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 گام یکی بهش میگه گام مینور غربی. We call this the western minor scale. western minor ما توی موسیقی ایرانی بهش میگیم اصفهان. We call the western minor uh, Esfahan in Persian music. برای اینکه گوشتون آشنا بشه که در به چی حرف میزنیم از دوستم شعریا بخونم که ترک وای وای رو پخش بکنم. So for uh, for your ears to get used to what we're talking about here uh, Shahriar please, please play uh, Why, why try? This track was uh, released in 1977. For the years ago. من میتونم به جرعت اینجا بگم که میلیون ها ایرونی با این تم زدن و رخصیدن I can say it with a lot of confidence that uh, millions and millions of Iranians have been have been dancing to this. In ahang, be kol in tarikh chehel sale in tem maruf. This tem is uh, is uh, famous in the, is one of the most famous themes in the past four years. Va va hala notay ino man baratun mikhunam. So he's going to write this question. Right? The collection of these scores that you hear is uh, the minor scale, the, the Western version. But Matriar Musili Irani, do to do to In the in Persian music, we use this minor scale in two ways. 
We produce two additional scales out of the minor, out of the standard Western minor scale. But, but, simple, but because it only has one changes in each, each scale, we can still count it minor. We can make D a little bit more bass and uh, call it D flat. اگر دی فلت باشه موسیقی کرد ها و موسیقی حال موسیقی پاپ ترکیه بر اساس این دی فلت the the music of chords and in in the the pop music in in turkey is based on this uh, d flat uh, version of the minor scale و البته در واقع اگر که یک چهارم رو هر یعنی یک کوارت دیگری بنش بکنین اینجا اونجا وقت پیدا می‌کنه موسیقی سنتی And if you uh, you you go up by uh, a quarter degree from D, from D, yeah, from D. D. yeah. Okay. If you go down from uh, D by a quarter degree, you get to the traditional uh, minor scale in Iran. So he's going to uh, to sing that uh, scale, which is called Dashti. با همین تغییر کوچیک به مهمترین گامش موسیقایی توی ایران میرسه. With this little change you get to the most important uh, musical scale in Iran. بیشتر قسمت بیشتر موسیقی‌های محلی ما شور دشتی هستند. Most of the local music that we have are in uh, شور دشتی scale. از موسیقی شمال ایران که تحت تاثیر ترکیه و ارمنستانه. Uh, from the north of Iran which is influenced uh, much by uh, by what, what? ترکیه و ارمنستان، ترکیه و ارمنیا. و تا موسیقی جنوب ایران تا تاثیر موسیقی آفریقا. To the south which is uh, highly influenced by the African music. و شرق ایران که تا تاثیر موسیقی پاکستان. And east which is influenced by Pakistan. همشون این گام رو استفاده میکنن. All of them use this scale. و در واقع این گام خیلی جالبه که سمبل نشون دادن غم غم های بسیاری از This uh, scale is uh, the symbol of uh, much of the sorrow in very uh, different places in Iran. Uh, but Shahram has uh, both happy and sad uh, works uh, produced in this scale. Now, I chose one of them for you and I'm going to play it for you. For getting excited about this music, you don't even need to know so much about the theory behind it. Behind it. But 
Because what makes us sad is the scale. And the way the style that the singer uses to sing. I heard the good news from Shahram that uh, um, the collection of his music together with uh, and, the, and the English translation has been uh, published recently. And when I get, uh, get my hands on it, I can, I can share it with you via email. The second thing that happens with the minor scale in Iran at times this B turns into the normal B and at times it is the B sharp. When uh, it, it, it's not uh, B sharp and it's only B. And we turn uh, A, A flat to A colon. Uh, which is uh, making a quarter degree more base. This creates another minor. We call this Nava. We call this the Nava scale. The characteristic feature of Nava scale is that uh, it moves from G to C. Uh, this has the this scale has the highest similarities with uh, blues. And when I was analyzing uh, Sharon's work, I realized that many years ago he has uh, combined the uh, com combined uh, this this scale to produce blues. Uh, sort of a combination of this. Thank you. Now, now again. As you can see, the romance Iranian. When you move uh, higher than C, you will get uh, the Iranian romance. And this is when uh, you're moving up from C to E and so on and so forth. But when you come down, you can uh, you can get rid of the A colon and get uh, uh, get blues. So he's in in effect uh, getting rid of This is the f the the feature of a uh, scale with five notes. He, uh, he used the part, a piece of blues at the very beginning.
knowingly putting uh, part, parts of blues music uh, aside the, the, together with Nama. Other than mine, you can uh, uh, ask for them that day. Let me say something bad about myself, yeah. تمام اون نسل جدیدی که اکسایتد هستن از لحاظ تئوریک راجع به موسیقی یکی مثل خود من اول دی پیپل این دی نیو جنریشن هو ار اکسایتد ابات دیس میوزیک لایک مای سلف یکی از نکاتش مسئله تلفیق اسکیل ایرونی با بلوز وان اف دی امپورتنت پوینتس ابات ایت از دی کامبینیشن اف دیس اند بلوز اونا خودشون مخاطب اینتلکچوال موزیک میدونن They know, they know themselves as, uh, as uh, intellectual uh, fans of music. We are dealing with a popu- popular type of music here. But we can see that 40 years ago in the same popular music, the same thing happened. We're getting to the point of this, this gathering right now. من در در بررسی کارهای آقای شپره امروز از خود ایشون اطلاعات رو دقیق‌تر گرفتم ایشون 25 تا آلبوم دارن تا سال 2012 So uh, in my analysis of uh, Sharon's work uh, today I got actually more information about it and uh, he has 25 albums ever since 1977 هیچ منبعی از خود ایشون بهتر نبود برای اینکه اسم آلبوم ها رو دقیق و به ترتیب تاریخی بیارید there is no better resource to get to know the albums and their timing and everything better than himself و من فقط چند تاشون اسم میبرم I just uh, name a few of them مثل آلبوم تلس تلسم آلبوم مثل باغ الفا آره یا خجالتی دیا تابستان تابستان 92 سامر 92 تابستان سامر 94 قصه ریتم اف دی نایت دنیا دی ورلد آتش مینز فایر و تپش مینز بیتینگ و مجموعه اینا 25 تا آلبومه دی کالکشن اف دیز ایز 25 آلبومز ما ازتون خواهش میکنم به این نکته فکر کنید. I ask you to think about this point. به به ویژه مخاطبم ایرانیان روشن فکر هستن. My my main audience is the is the Iranians who are really intellectual. که احتمالاً بیرون از اینجا توی نیو نیو جنریشن دارن به حرفای ما گوش میدن. Who are uh, possibly listening to us outside of here. یک میوزیشن حدود 50 سال 25 تا آلبوم تولید میکنه. A musician play, uh, produces 50, uh, 25 albums over 50 years. I had the chance to analyze 160, 163 of his, his songs here. He has had way, way more than that. But of all those 163, only 18 are in the major scale. The rest uh, is in these three types of minor scales. The, so in his analysis of the measuring time, he realized that in uh, of the 163, I forgot the uh, 101 of them were in uh, 6-8. 6-8 time. Rhythm 6-8, in the uh, in our earlier conversation, we pointed out that uh, six eight time is the uh, is the rhythm that Iranians are uh, most comfortable dancing to. Uh, Twenty nine uh, of the songs were in uh, double meter. And uh, as we said last time, uh, the duple meter is, um, is, is the Western version of the 6-8, as in, uh, the, in the West it is much easier to dance to it. And the remaining are a combination of uh, the two, 6 and duple meter. 
So in 80% of these, uh, the, we have the six that you این نکته عجیبی نیست که ایشون رو میکنه آیفون شادی. This is not a, uh, a strange point that makes him a, uh, the, the icon of cheer, cheerfulness. ولی نکته عجیب اینه که از اون 163 تا کار همچنان که گفتم حدود 80 درصد 80 درصدش در گام مینوره. But what is strange is in fact that, uh, that of all these songs 80% of them are in minor scale, the scale of sorrow and sadness. وقتی که میخواستم این مقاله رو بنویسم when i wanted to write this uh, write what i'm sharing with you here tonight می‌خواستم به روشن فکران هم نسل خودم i wanted to tell something to the intellectuals of my generation یا کسایی که فکر می‌کنن روشن فکران هم all the people who think they're intellectuals اینو بگم i wanted to tell them this که برخورد ما لایه‌های اجتماعی ایرانی برخوردمون با هم دیگه برخورد جاجمنتال the interaction that we have with one another in Iran is an extremely judgmental type of interaction. ما در درونمون با موزیک پاپ لذت می‌بریم ولی ترجیح می‌دیم در ظاهر pop music from the inside but we prefer to pretend otherwise in در ترجیح می‌دیم در ظاهر که اون موزیک رو put down کنیم. We are trying to demean that type of music. یا فکر کنیم که موزیکیه که مورد سلیقه ما نیست. try to pretend that that's the type of music that we do not enjoy. من علت این قضیه رو این میدونم که مخاطب ایرانی تجربه کافی از لحاظ تاریخی برای مخاطب برای موسیقی‌های مختلف رو نداره. I think the reason for this is that the Iranian audience doesn't have enough experience with regard to the history of this type of music. خود من اینو تجربه کردم. I experienced this myself. وقتی برای اولین بار جان لوکر رو کشف می‌کردم فکر می‌کردم همه موسیقی‌های دیگه بدن. Uh, when, for the first time when I uh, discovered John Hooker, I realized I thought that all the other types of music are awful. برای برای مخاطب یک کشورهای جامعه اروپایی و جامعه آمریکا که از زمان رنسانس حداقل تجربه شنیدن موسیقی دارن برای 500 سال موسیقی های مختلف. But the, the Western audience that has uh, a very uh, old uh, understanding of the, of the different types of music emerging since Renaissance. بدیهیه که همین الان در کشور آمریکا ممکنه مخاطبی باشه که به تام ویتس گوش میده و تعداد تعداد مخاطبش هم خیلی کمه. In the US we have Tom Waits, someone who is a fan of Tom Waits and and he has very few fans. و خیلی مخاطب الیتیه. And he has like elitist kind of fans. حتی از اون الیتسر میتونه به یک گروه کور گوش بده. But even more elitist, someone might be یا به یه استاد پیانوی جاز که توی کافه تاریک توی نیویورک میزنه و سی نفر مخاطب بیشتر نداره. Or a jazz master. آره جاز 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 پیانو ماستر who is playing in some bar somewhere in New York and has only 30 fans or something. ولی این آدمها هیچ وقت مخاطب موزیک پاپولار آمریکایی رو جاز نمیکنن. But they don't really they're not really judgmental towards the popular the fans of popular music. ممکنه که هیچ وقت ریحانا گوش نکنن ولی اونو به من ولی اون اونو به من یک یک نوع موزیک قبول داره بود اکسپتد از تایپ اف این این روکت اپروچ اولیه من بود که فکر میکردم که میشه از موسیقی پاپولار در اینجا موسیقی آقای شپره به عنوان یک امر پاپولار دفاع کرد and this is my this was my first uh, realization that we can defend uh, Sharon's work here as popular music ولی الان که اینجا نشستم میخوام بگم که من موزیک ایشون به عنوان یک موزیک روشن فکرانه دفاع I want to defend his work as an intellectual's work به خاطر اینکه وقتی واردش شدم دیدم که خیلی از اون شاخص ها رو که مخ... موزیک روشن فکری داره ایشون در کارش انجام داده uh, because when i got to it and when i started analyzing it i realized that uh, much of the uh, Amazing features that are in the intellectual music are also present here. But for me, it doesn't make any difference that, because I'm a musician, that I'm doing this part in the way that I'm doing it, and that I'm doing it in a way that I'm doing it. This is a need for me to mix it. This is a need for me to mix it. Because it doesn't matter if uh, it is done knowingly or if it is done uh, unknowingly. If I've done it and if I really felt the urge to do it, then I would. Uh, then it is extremely valuable in and of itself. یک 
به جزه بدید برای که یه فان داشته باشین یه استراحت کوچیک داشته باشین قبل از اینکه این بحث روشن فکری رو تموم بکنم میخوام بهتون یک تصویر بدم یک یه داستان بگم دهه 80 ایران تصرف 1980 ما موقع بچه بودیم He was a kid back then. و آقای شبتره و نسل ایشون در ایران زندگی نمیکرد. And, uh, and Shahram and his generation weren't living in Iran at the time. شما تصور کنید یه حکومت ایدئولوژیک و کاملا متاسف. Think about an ideologic government and which is very conservative. که جلوی هر نوع موزیکی رو گرفته. Which has stopped any type of music. حتی کارش به جای رسته که مارش نظامی پخش میکنه صبح تا شب. Uh, that is going to a point where they're playing uh, military marching. Uh, و موزیک تردیشنال و پاپ همه از بین رفته have, uh, و لس آنجلس برای ما مثل یک بهشتیه که ازش صوت میاد and, uh, as a as a he- heaven where you get uh, beautiful sounds out. همه شهرهای ایران شهرهای بزرگ ایران توسط صدام حسین بمبارون میشن all the cities in iran are uh, bombed by saddam hussein توی مد مدارس به ما جز خشونت و ایدئولوژی هیچ چی نمیگن. At school they don't teach us anything except for ideology and uh, aggression. هیچ راهی برای شادمانی وجود نداره. There's no room for happiness and cheerfulness. هشت سال در این وضعیت. This is this is an eight year period. و در کل این هشت سال یک ترانه آیکون شادمانی بود برای اینکه تمام ایرانی ها در پارتی های در خصوصیشون باش میرقصن. And in all these four, eight, eight years, there was, only, there was one song that Iranians danced to and enjoyed at their private parties. I hope that you've managed to imagine how, how this, this scenario is like. And the music that you are listening to now, and to see what the music that you're about to hear now, uh, what sort of significance it had 35 years ago. مضمون شعری مضمون ساده است که راجع به معشوقش صحبت یه لاب سانگ uh, this is a the, the story شاید. the simple story of a person who has a lover بله یکم بهش گوش کنیم بعد بریم بحثمون رو تموم می‌کنیم we listen to it for a while and then we uh, continue our discussion We are listening to this song under Islamic Republic. It's one of them that has mixed things of two, four, and six. Right now we are listening to two. Transfer to the six eight now. Okay, no problem. That's fine. همین الان شنیدن این موزیک با یادآوری اون سالها در اوج شادی میتونه برای من گریه آور باشه. Right now, that this music uh, while reminding me of the happy days, of, happy moments back in the day, can be extremely sad for him. شما تصور کنید خانواده ای رو که دخترش عروس شده و دارن این موزیک رو برای مهمان ها پخش میکنن Imagine a family that is playing this music at, the, at their daughter's wedding و در همون شب پسرش مجروح از جنگ برگشته و توی بیمارستان And at this, in the same night he, the, their son has come back uh, wounded from, from the war و همه ملت ها در مقاطع مختلف این تجربه ها رو داشتن. And all different nations at different stages have had similar experiences. 
اون موقع ما به دنبال تجربه برابری بودیم الان همه در ایران از آزادی بیان حرف میزنن دیگه چیزی با چیزی برابر نیست اختلاف طبقاتی مثل جوامع مدرنه مثل آمریکاست و فقیر فقیر اگزاجریت و پولدار اگزاجریت زیاد داریم Uh, we have extreme poverty and extreme uh, wealth. ولی هیچ کسی از این نسل جوان به این فکر نمیکنه که در دوره‌ای که اینترنت نبود و همه تریبونا خاموش بود. But the new generation doesn't think about the days when there was no internet and uh, there was no way to get access to this kind of music. قطعی که شنیدید چقدر ارزشمند The music that you're listening to uh, is extremely valuable. So the new generation is oblivious of that. در آخر صحبت چند تا از ویژگی های به قول خودم تئوریک و روشنفکرانه کارهای آقای شپره رو اسم میبرم و اگر خواستید در آخر میتونیم از ایشون دعوت کنیم که تشریف بیارن و به Q&A پاسخ بدن نکته اول اینه که یک first point is یک فیلسوف اروپای شرقی هست به اسم میخائیل باختی there is a philosopher from west eastern europe called میخائیل باختی و دو تا شاگرد معروف داره یکی به اسم جولیا کریستوفا و یکی تز به تانتو دروف these two are the, the major students that he has میخائیل باختی کسی که برای اولین بار به ریشه های کارناوال و شادی توی فرهنگ غربی اشاره میکنه من از میخایل باختن یاد گرفتم که اگر یک ملتی شادمان میزیه به خاطر که اسطوره شادمانی رو داره فرهنگ یونانی دیونیزوس دیونیزوس رو به دنیای غرب معرفی کرد. دیونیزوس خدای شراب و شادمانی و شادخاری. هیچ ملتی از اسطوره‌هاش جدا نیست. اگر در جامعه مثل ایران افراد نخبه هنوز که هنوز به پایین کشیده میشن توسط مردم و دولت به خاطر که ما اسطوره های اینو در ادبیات خودمون داریم داریم اسطوره اسطوره پدرکشی و پسرکشی بزرگترین بزرگترین اتفاق اتفاقی که در خیابون های ایران میفته در روز آشوراس یک ملت جمع میشن و گریه میکنن برای یک اسطوره که 1400 سال پیش در یک جنگ کشته شد For an icon who has been killed years ago in a war. و من از میخائیل باختین آموختم که در واقع علت به دین وسیله باید به موزیک پاپ و پاپ کالچر احترام گذاشت. And I learned from Mikhail Bakhtin therefore that uh, this is the reason that you need to, uh, to, to appreciate pop and uh, و من خود تجربه خود من در موزیک از موزیک سنتی می اومد در my own experience was coming from a traditional background a traditional persian music و احتمالا شکلای از موسیقی میکسینگ یا تلفیقی and, uh, and some forms of uh, mixture of different types of music خ... uh, ولی تمام بستگان من خانواده من و همه دوستان و همه ایران موزیک پاپ گوش میکردن but uh, people around me my family the people, uh, people in Iran everyone was just listening to 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 the, to music to popular music to, to the listening to popular music من در سن 23 4 سالگی 23 یا 24 بود که برگشتم و موزیک پاپ ایرانی رو کشف کردم uh, it was in my uh, it was 
just by the time I was 23 or 24 that I came back and I started discovering the popular music. یعنی در واقع میخائیل باختین به من کمک کرد که من فرهنگ پاپ رو بزنم. میخائیل باختین who helped me get into the arena of popular music. But آقای شهراب شفره در دهه 1970 in the 1970s شهرام موسیقی موسیقی به یه بخش از موسیقی فولکلور ایرانی رو با موزیک غربی تعریف کرد میکس کرد in the in the 1970s شهرام for the first time uh, combined the, the Iranian folklore music with, uh, with با موزیک غربی با with, with western music اسو اسو رو لطف می‌کنید این موزیک ریتمش از این موزیک جنوبی میاد The rhythm of this music is coming from from southern rhythms. The scale is major. Can you tell me the group of percussion for when it gets hot? The group of that. I think that uh, the same way that uh, evolution starts from uh, Africa. همه موزیک هم از آفریقا میاد. The entire music comes from Africa. هر کدومش به یه شکلی. One one way or another. بخشش از از طریق اقیانوس هند اومده جنوب ایران. Some of it has made it to the south of Iran through through the Indian Pacific. And the بخشش از طریق آتلانتیک اومده به آمریکا. And some of it has made it to the U.S. through the Atlantic. نکته دیگه ای که راجع به کار ایشون هست مسئله اهمیت دادن به دال و مدلول در کار. And the other one, the other important point to to look into is uh, his his uh, uh, his concern with uh, sign and meaning in in uh, in music. اولین کسی که راجع به ساین اند مینینگ توی اد توی زبان شناسی حرف زد the first person who concerns himself with uh, sign and meaning in uh, semantics یه فیلسوف فرانسوی بود به اسم فردیناند سوسو uh, it was uh, Ferdinand de Saussure که کتابش به عنوان تکست بوک بعد از اون بسیار معروف شد uh, whose, uh, whose, whose, uh, whose book a course in uh, general uh, linguistics became extremely famous in linguistics Lally. وقت شما رو نمیگیرم که بگم اون چی گفت. I don't want to waste your time to talk about what he said. ولی میخوام اینو بگم که تمام توجهی که به ویژه در 34 سال اخیر به مسئله آواها و فونتیک و حروف میشه در کلام تحت تاثیر دانش زبان شناسی. But I do want to say that uh, the entire the attention that's been given to and letters to words and to the different combination arrangements of letters and words has uh, is thanks to uh, the study of uh, uh, linguistics this studies و در واقع اولین بار فرمالیستای روسیه بودن که به این مسئله توجه کردن که شعر نباید به دنبال توضیح معنی باشه and it was first the uh, russian formalists who started thinking about Uh, who, start, who proposed the idea that, that uh, poetry shouldn't be after the, exp- uh, the description of, uh, of, uh, of a scene, of a meaning. But it can instead be looking into the, the particular arrangement of, uh, of sounds and, and letters inside the world. It's interesting that we have a lot In the, uh, in the Persian culture, we have a lot of uh, uh, attention given to this kind of uh, the arrangement of letters and words. This one is very hard. No, 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 no. 
just just try to hear the type of the the arrangement of the sound basically what is the sound the شما نیازی نداره که معنی معنی اینو بدونید ولی یک یک حس موسیقایی به شما میده. You don't need to know what it means but it does give you a sense of a strong sense of music and and sounds. و این همون چیزی که موسیقی و رپ امروزی داره ازش استفاده میکنه. This is exactly what rap is using nowadays. در واقع قسمت اعظمی از موزیک رپ راجع به معنی کر نمیکنه لزوم great part of uh, rap songs nowadays is not uh, revolving around uh, the meaning that is conveyed در واقع ادعای اصلیش در چیدمان موسیقایی کلمات it takes rather it takes pride in the particular usage of the word play that is that is offered شریعت میلاد رو لطف می‌کنید پخش کنید به یک نمونه از حدود 30 سال پیش در کار آقای شهرام شفره گوش this is the work by شهرام This night that I'm talking about is not a night. Yani it's like a day. But in sharp This night is not like the last night. But uh, in sharp There is no night like tonight. یعنی با با قرار دادن ساده این کلمات by a simple arrangement of these words دنبال این نیست که معنی عمیقی رو به ما بگه he's not trying to tell us some very deep uh, meaning he's not trying to convey such meaning دنبال این که این حروف رو به این زیبایی کنار هم دیگه بذاره he is after putting all these uh, these sounds and letters to mm. it in, to, together like this و اون آدم هایی که در طی سالها با این رقصیدن and all these people who've been dancing to this for years and years چه بخوان چه نخوان از این شیدمان شی لذت بردن if they were or not they like it they have been enjoying this uh, but, but yeah they've been enjoying this over, over years and years چند تا نمونه دیگه من اینجا دارم ولی چون وقت کمه نمیتونیم پخش بکنیم I have another couple of examples here but uh, because of the time barriers we can't uh, uh, which is uh, the, the whole point is that there is a greater uh, emphasis on sign as opposed to the meaning he has a piece called if I don't know it's been released in 1995. First, he has a. Uh, he's, he's borrowing from. Uh, uh, the prince. No, no, Shahzad. Yeah. Shahzad by Rimsky Kursakov. Okay, yeah. He's taking that uh, and, and, and trying to apply it to uh, Charba uh, in others. And this is a work that if you do music pop, you can do it in the music pop. 
uh, and if it is and if it is uh, pointed out about uh, pop music, uh, all, all the fans would be very very proud to hear it. یک یک نکته دیگه مسئله استفاده توامان سازهای ایرانی و سازهای غربی کنار هم داره. Another point is the great combination of Persian and Western instruments in the same pieces. و در واقع این قطع دادشون زیاده که and the number is so high that وقت نمیکنیم همهشو پخش کنیم. ولی در واقع این هم این هم به عنوان یک یکی از بخش های دانش مدرن موسیقی پاپ and this is a part of the modern understanding of pop music که موسیسیان ها سعی کنن از سازهای محلی خودشون استفاده کنن در موسیقی یک نقطه آخر این که خیلی برای شما جالب خواهد بود. The last point which is going to be very interesting to you. به اکثر کارهای ایشون که گوش بکنید. When you listen to most of his works. میفهمید که ریش اینسپایرشنش از موسیقی پاپولار ترکی و عربی نیست. He is uh, not inspired by Turkish and Arabic music. بلکه اینسپایرشنش مستقیما از راک اند رول. He is mainly inspired by uh, directly inspired by rock and roll. در خیلی از جا من امروز در یک گفتگو کوتاه که با ایشون داشتم in, uh, in many instances and also the little conversation ایشون همچنان که خودشون میگن عاشق ری چارلز عاشق جیمز براون هستن he is still in love with ray charles and, and james brown و برای همین که نکته که در تنظیمات میتونیم اسم ببریم حضور زیاد سازهای بادیه and uh, maybe that's why he, there is a great presence of uh, wind instruments in his works قطع راک اند رول اونجا هست شهر یا نه راک قطعه راک اند رول مربوط به کارهای قبل از انقلاب ایشونه. His uh, rock and roll piece goes back to uh, pre uh, Iranian revolution uh, works. و uh, از از قطار میشه اسم ببرید Don't let me uh, be misunderstood. این قطعه مشخصا کاور از روی مینا سیمون. میشه پخش کنید. ولی لحن ایشون ببینید چطوری تغییر داده آواز مینا سیمون. See how he's changed the این ساز که میشنن این تمال موسیقی جنوب ایران می ناسیمون نمی دونه همچی جایی وجود داره much more uh, many more pieces to to be discussed و من برای هر کدومشون کل یادداشت داشتم که بعد میتونستم بگم we had we had a lot to share with you but obviously we can ولی یک بار دیگه اس میبرم اهمیت تلفیق موزیک فولکلور ایرانی با موزیک غربی so we're going to go through them like uh, bullet points once again so the the, uh, the, the combination combining the Iranian folklore music and the western music اهمیت استفاده از الفاظ و دالها در زبان the the introduction of the linguistic concepts of, of sign and meaning into the into Persian poetry اهمیت تلفیق سازهای ایرانی و غربی توی arrangement the importance of uh, the uh, combining western and, uh, and Iranian 
و اهمیت اینسپایرشن مستقیم از موزیک راک اند رول ولی چرا ما اسم این ایونت رو گذاشتیم صداقت و مینور But why did we call this uh, this event honesty and minor? به خاطر که به باور من و به باور خیلی های دیگه because in my view and in the view of many many others بیوگرافی ایشون کریرش و لایف استایلش his lifestyle his uh, biography and his his work واقعا سمبولی از صداقت هنریه is a, is a symbol of uh, of music uh, of uh, artistic honesty در, حال در حالی که خیلی از خواننده های پاپ آهنگساز دارن while many pop singers have یا شاعر دارن or have, or have people's, or have songwriters آره بیش از 85 درصد کاراشو ایشون خودش ساخته و خودش خونده و خودش نوشته uh, he has uh, written produced uh, composed and sung over 85% of his works بدون اینکه حتی اینو لحظه‌ای در طی 40 سال در یک اینترویو بگه without even mentioning it a single time in a single interview over 40 years برای خیلی از خواننده های پاپ که در حال از بین رفتن بوده کریرشون ایشون به واسطه آهنگسازی دوباره اونا رو رو آورد uh, many pop singers whose works and uh, who, who are going through downturns uh, he, he he composed works for them that, that brought them back to the circle و نکته اینه که بیشترین تعداد ترانه یعنی فیچرینگ ترانه رو داره با خواننده های دیگه تعداد تر ترانه مشترک با دیگران خونده yeah he has uh, he, he has the highest number of um, uh, featuring with other singers in his in his uh, record فقط من شما رو به این موضوع توجه میدم که در عالم موسیقی تریدیشنال ما Uh, I draw your attention to the point that in our, uh, our traditional music realm دو تا خواننده بزرگ موسیقی سنتی in the, uh, the two greatest uh, uh, traditional music singers که خیلی هم ممکنه ادعای عرفان و ادبیات داشته باشن that have a lot of uh, pretension of, uh, of uh, spirituality, spirituality and آره you know. spirituality توی life stylشون داشته باشن in their lifestyle حتی حاضر نیستن با هم دیگه توی یک پارتی قرار بگیرن. حتی حاضر نیستن با هم عکس بگیرن. و ما اینجا جنتلمنی رو داریم که نه تنها کریر خودش رو بلکه کریر خیلی از آدم ها رو بیلداب کرد. who not only built up his own career but also those that of many others. من به عنوان میوزیشن به شما این اطمینان میدم که در این ام فقط باید زیر پا گذاشتن غرور باشه. This uh, takes a lot of, uh, uh, of modesty. و بزرگ منشی. And... و بزرگی. Maturity. <laughs> و و احتمالاً احتمال به نفس زیاد. and a lot of uh, confidence also. که نیازی ندونی خودتو از کسی بالاتر یا پایینتر بدونی. Without uh, needing to see yourself as a higher or lower than others. به کار خودت اطمینان داشته باشی. You have confidence in your own work. و سالها پیش بری. And uh, go on for years and years. تا برسیم به سال 2014. To get to the for 2014. که امسال پنجاهمین سال فعالیت حرفه‌ایش. Which is uh, your 50th year of active work in, in the field. ما امیدوارم که این ایونت رو به شکل‌های دیگه در جاهای دیگه با حضور خود ایشون بشه باز هم برگزار کرد تا این این نکته رو برای دوستان شهر I hope that we're going to have events like this with him in, in the future in different occasions so that we can point out this, this, this great points that we touched upon here. من به احترام ایشون کلام و اثر برمی‌دارم همیشه. That's also pretty tricky to translate but uh, <laughs> there's great respect going on here. Great. No no we, we can just I take my hat for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so if uh, anyone is interested to having Q, I, I know uh, most of you are maybe are not you're not familiar with the uh, his work, but uh, if you have by any chance you have some questions from Mr. Shapiro, you can invite him to have him here and maybe. Yeah, yeah.
and see how much is here for a translation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope so. Uh, no, my English is not very good because I learned English. Uh, I didn't go to school here, just so I can't talk the way I'm talking. But you talk very good overall. Thank you. Just, فقط از این دام من یه تیکی کوچیک بگم دارم خاص فقط بدون آن رفقا که من چجوری شروع کردم و قبل از هر چی بخوام ایرانی‌ها می‌دونند که بالاخره من چند سالمه ولی دلم می‌خواد اون خاله‌ای که اونجا نشسته ازشون بپرسین حتی می‌دونم من چند سالمه But I want to ask the lady who is sitting there to guess how old uh, how old he is. Okay. Okay, because uh, but uh, because they they talk about the the time I was singing. Yes, I start. Uh, sorry, I'm talking English. I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> I start 1965. Uh, I was a drummer, and that's why uh, I start with the rhythm rhythm section. And uh, I loved uh, uh, James Brown because by that time the rhythm is uh, R&B, <coughs> rhythm and blues. And uh, I, as, as he said, the gentleman of my friends, he has been tarif kard, begu. He said many good things more than I was expecting actually. But I was expecting actually. But I was expecting actually. But I was expecting I was just 15. I was just 15. I was just 15. I was just 15. I was just I I was 15. <laughs> I was 15 years old. I started drum and singing on the north of Iran, Caspian Sea, called uh, Caspian Sea uh, uh, Motelgu. I started from there when I was uh, uh, 15 years old. I played drums and uh, I had a one band, four piece band, exactly because I, I, I loved uh, Beatles. I chose the name for my band, Rebels. <laughs> Looked like a Beatles. And uh, we played uh, three guitar and uh, uh, drummer, but I want to tell you something for the people. Uh, sorry, I when I talk for uh, Farsi because I think I'm going wrong way. Begu, man dar zamani shuru kardam musiqi ro ke Iran ma mesle Amerika nabud. I started music. Uh, I started working in music when Iran was too far away from. Ke ke abakher shod. Which it started becoming yeah. later in the in the world. موی بلند اونجا جرأت نمیکرد کسی داشته باشه ام تا که بعد سال پنج از پنجاه سال پیش و من پدرم و من در یک زندگی من پدرم سرهنگ ارتش بودم kick me out of the school all the time and uh, because why you uh, her like this why you doing this why you doing that because all the time I play Persian rhythm and uh, yeah. kick him out of class all the time but instrument nabud to Iran guitar nabud jazz nabud hichi nabud and I learned very hard in this music by that time, no guitar in Iran, no keyboard in Iran, nothing anyway. Till today is the 65 years, I'm 66 years old. And 50 years I'm doing this business. And I'm very happy tonight. The Dusta Azizam. I'm right here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having a great attention. و خیلی از دوستان متشکرم که نشستم و گوش کردن اگه سوالی دارن از من یو 
Should we have? Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yes, I, I write this. Um, uh, I made my music, no arrangement. I give the arrangement to somebody else, but uh, I, I, I play the instrument. My first instrument is drum, second is the bass, and the percussion, and I know some keyboard only for uh, make a song. But yes, I to go ahead. What I'm saying, Tamar Shiromo has to know that there's a Shiromo. And something around 90 percent of his songs are written by Tamar Shiromo. Some others have done that. About the project, you just asked because this explanation was not too my learning style because I. But the type of music, of people that I really like. because we have only two types of music, one uh, pop music, one uh, uh, sonati, what you call the, the traditional music and pop. And, uh, but he doesn't listen to a lot of uh, traditional music. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
اون شعر رو بخوام بخونم نقدوست ندارم چون شعر رو رب یا اعتراض آمیزه یا توش حرفای بد میذارم I followed it. I was singing first ten years of my music. I was singing in English, Italian, because by that time in Iran, uh, no Persian music. It was only Sunni music in radio. When yeah, we get, it was two, two. Two. We saw that was a We was twenty years old. We Iran. Mod Karda. He started. He. He. The emergence of pop in Iran is all to him. Yes. Ke. Mod Karda. And after that. من فقط موزیک ویگن رو گوش کردم در اون موقع و Back in the day he was only listening to vegans music. Then follow کردم موزیک اونو و بعد از آنگه بارون بارونه امتحان دادم تو رادیو با ابی و شروع And after the song uh, after the song بارون بارونه uh, he started working together with ابی Yeah another singer we were into radio radio and امتحان کردم مارو He took an exam and they let him uh, start singing in Iran. Start singing Persian. Shalom, been doing like this for the past, I would say, 40 years. I was a kid. What's your secret? The secret here of one, two, three, four, lady, five, <laughs> Okay. Don't get upset, ladies. Huh? I get married very late. <laughs> Because when you know you get when you marry 25, you know. I married 50. That's that kind of thing. Anyway, thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you to Mr. Rowan Butch for having us here. Thank you so much, the president of the music department, and also dear Siavash for translating. Thank you so much.